Who are you? I'm uh, St- Sir Scott Sturgeon, a.k.a. Stizzacrack. From? New York City. From? Uh, New York State. From Leftover? United States of America. Crack. Yes. And right beside you, who'd you have? This is Mr. Brad Logan. My name is Brad Logan of California. And Leftover Crack. Welcome to Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. We never thought we'd make it. And right off the bat, I have a gift for you. And it is in this towel right here. If you could open it, please, right now. What do we have in this towel? Oh, my God. Wendy O. Williams. Amazing. Wendy O. Williams bobblehead. A Wendy O. Williams bobblehead. Cool. Who you've had t-shirted. I I did have a Wendy O. Williams t-shirt. Was there a lot of good times associated with that t-shirt and with Wendy O. Williams? Well, I never met Wendy O. Williams, though I'm a fan. Yeah, that shirt, you know, a lot of those good times I was pretty blacked out drunk. And then eventually I lost the shirt blacked out drunk. But that's a good time in itself, blacked out drunk. But I've seen that shirt a lot in photos of me. What can you say about Wendy O. Williams? Vegan. Animal lover. Uh, Chainsaw wielder. Pioneer pioneer of... uh, a vegan and healthy eating in New York City, and also a pioneer of chainsawing televisions and blowing up cars at clubs. An early Mohawk uh, pioneer as well. And the pioneer of some of the first uh, famous fake breasts yeah. that were not porn related. And Brad, I have a gift for you. Somebody really important, uh, subhumans, the only subhumans that matter, seven inch. Is this the Canadian? This is the Canadian subhumans. Yes, the Canadian. I know. I, I went. I, w- I thought I was buying a, a UK subhumans tape in New York City at this place called Reconstruction Boy. Records, and I went home and I was like, yeah, and I was like, okay, this is, this is, it is pretty good. But uh, it you bought the right subhuman. It wasn't the. It wasn't the one I needed at that moment in my life. But I, I loved it too, though. Like the Canadian subhumans. Rest in yeah. peace, the lead singer Wimpy. Rest in peace, w- Wimpy the Roy. Real yeah. activists. These guys are the real deal. The Canadian subhuman. Yes. Do you still have Stiz a, a strawberry chocolate horse in your freezer? Yes, it's still there. That one strawberry the horse. Tr- <laughs> we, I feel like it wouldn't die. We I couldn't like, get that thing I feel to like die. Brad named it. it to lose. Brad named it because he. He, we put a picture on MySpace or something, and you wrote Strawberry Horse and Rider, and then I was like, right, Strawberry Horse. But I had just been stuffing strawberries. I did a lot of stuff like this in those days when um, yeah. I was like, let's say I was doing a lot of, uh, of indiscriminate pill taking, and perhaps, you know, what do they have that stuff that's here in Vancouver that everybody loves? Um, heroin and and then I was like I'd be in this like eight hour van ride and be like oh I have this plastic horse with a bobblehead and I'd stuff strawberries down it all day it's also and then called I painted it on door. it's also called being on door too yeah, long I had fun but then it's not as fun as putting the tofu pups in a CD player but yeah I was curious leftover crack what is their importance of this record right here <laughs> suicidal <laughs> tendencies what is the import what is not the importance of this record right here yeah, we'll have to turn it not only it not only is this an amazing record in itself and a document of the Los Angeles hardcore but this gentleman right here is is Mr. Amory Smith formerly of Suicidal Tendencies formerly of the BC Boys formerly of F minus which was a band that him and I had together and it was a really good time and um, and our first drummer in Leftover Crack and also Thanks the first drummer in Leftover Crack yeah. yes it's supposed to be like this and somebody um they messed it up in the when they were doing Not the negatives and they accidentally um, got it upside down, and now uh, forever everybody thinks this is like artistic and great, but they accidentally they just made a mistake. And I have a gift for you, Stizza. A cool 12-inch. Oh, wow, cool. From 94. This is a great song, too. Uh, what can you say about the coup and leftover crack? Well, I have another band called Star Fucking Hipsters, and, and Boots Riley came in and uh, did a song with us. It was kind of like there's a few moments in my life where uh, you're like, oh, sh- holy shit, like... How did like I get to here where I'm getting to do this really awesome thing with somebody I really respect and like that I'd say there's two things that that stand out and one is working with with Boots and uh, the other is when we uh, we did those Operation Ivy songs with Jesse Michaels that was a that big was a no shit moment too yeah. like there's nothing that can really top that or this these those two things are kind of untoppable in my book. Did you- 
you meet Biggie? Because I knew you met Bushwick Bill. You were there at that time. Like, you were in New York. Well, I met Bushwick Bill in Austin, like, three years ago. I didn't, I didn't meet any of these. The only person I did meet in the 90s that I'm really glad I met, that is, uh, um, I met Old Dirty Bastard in, in SF in, like, I say 96 or 97, and, uh, um... The cool thing, well, I mean, it's it's tragic. It's unfortunate that Old Dirty Bastard's dead. He is my favorite Wu Tang rapper and like one of my favorite rappers of all time. Just like unmatched as his style. There's nobody that has done anything like that in hip hop ever. And you know, it's debatable if anybody's done anything like that before him, including like Rudy Ray Moore and like Blowfly. You know, they have their their shtick, but they didn't do what Old Dirty Bastard did. And so um, I was homeless, living in the Tenderloin. Or not the Tenderloin, but South of Market. We were living under the sidewalk on Mission and Third Third Street, and uh, I um, I got to town and somebody dropped a bunch of money. Let's just say they dropped a bunch of money. They were gonna drop that money again, so I didn't give it back to them. And uh, I bought a ticket for my friend Patrick to see um, Venom at at, at the same pl- this club in SF. And then you know we spent all the rest of the money on on crack and pills and alcohol, and then. Um, then Venom canceled, or maybe it was Merciful Fate. We'll just Anyways, say we'll just say Venom. And uh, and I went, I went, we went there to get the money back for the ticket, and they're like, "Well, you can have the money back, or you could have a ticket to any of these other shows." Which you know they, just, they didn't want to give the money back. I was like, "Oh, I'll go see Old Dirty Bastard." I was like, "Cool." And so I went to the show. It was a pretty good show. Let's just put it that way. It was pretty good. He had a lot of other people rapping. And rapping for him sometimes, but uh, but at the end of the show he was um, on stage, and some people were getting stuff signed. But I was like 50 people back, and I was like, my my New York City welfare ID, where is it? It's his record cover. And um and as, by the time I got it in my hand, he was disappeared. And I was like, all right. So everybody else is going, getting in cabs and taking buses and getting in their cars and driving back to wherever they lived, whereas I was leaving the theater and going back towards the Tenderloin through the alleys. And that's where I lived. Like, if I just went a few blocks up through the alleys, I was under the sidewalk at my place that I was squatting. And um, there he was, like, behind a chain, a chain link fence. I seen Old Dirty Bastard. I was like, you know, he's going to, he's got to, like, he's going to see this welfare idea. Even if, like, whoever it is, he's going to go to say hi to the guy in welfare in New York. So I pull it out, and he's like, he's talking to someone, and he gets a grin just like the one in your face right now. You got to show the camera. It's like that, like, and he comes up to me, and he's, he comes up to the fence, and I was like, I could hardly talk. It was like the only time in my life I was tongue-tied, believe it or not, I was tongue-tied. And I was like, but, but, uh, 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 and I, I was like, said something about squatters liking old dirty bastard because we're all dirty, you know? And that was filthy. I was like in, I was sleeping in, an, you know, outdoors, no showers. Brad knew me at this time. And um, he went and found a pen. He like ran around and got a pen and he signed his name on it. And I still have it to this day and uh, pretty special. He like went out of his way to like sign my New York City Welfare ID. I was going to ask you, Leftover Crack, about New York punk history, oh, yeah. the False Prophets. False Prophets are great. I was fortunate enough to grow up in the city, and although I was not allowed to go to many shows or like go out late or stay out on the weekends till I ran away from home, False Prophets were always around. And uh, just, um, you know, great political punk band, and Stefan's a friend of ours, and uh, he's a singer. And he just had all these props. He's kind of like the carrot top of uh, Alternative Tentacles, I would call it. And, uh, you know, this record in particular is interesting because it's out of print. And um, I did a compilation. I really wanted destructive engagement for my compilation. Instead, I got um, Baghdad Stomp. But nobody could get a copy of this. There's no digital copy of Destructive Engagement, which is one of the best tracks. It's probably the best False Prophet song. Somehow it's not on their best of. Quote, I think crusties are fine, but Stizza is high on the stink meter. He's been kicked off planes. What, who said that? From? From what? Verbicide fanzine. Okay. Fat? Wait, um, uh, I haven't been kicked off a plane? For- Fat Mike. Oh, Fat Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He- Your label head said yeah. that. He did, yeah, yeah, he definitely wasn't, like, super happy with how I smelled for a long time. Yeah, that's true. He's weird, too, because he'll, like, um, he'll, like, share a dildo with you, but he won't, um, you know, and he'll be like, yeah, put on this latex thing that everybody was naked in all day, but then he's like, oh, you smell bad. I'm like, fuck you, man. You're stuck up. Who cares? 
True story. You're hurting my feelings. Yeah. I was curious, what do you guys know about the Peace Comp? This is an important comp, especially the booklet. Yeah, this is great. I love this comp. Got every band that I liked from the really? 80s. Like, yeah. I, I'd be like, is that band on there? And I'd be like, oh, yeah, they're on there. They're all on there. Every band from Reagan Youth to... Zounds. I'm guessing that Zounds is on there. The booklet is amazing. What do you think about 80s or 90s booklets? What do you think about booklets? I love booklets. I love, I think that's the first thing that, that after, after they give me for convenience or give me death tape that I had, once I got some of these Dead Kennedys records with these giant newspaper booklets in them, I was like, these are just sit there for hours, get stoned and read the booklet and listen to the record, you know? Yeah. Pretty cool stuff. About this comp in particular, though, is um, I was... I put that, that comp I was talking about getting false profits on, which I think they were on this too, maybe. I went ahead I, and was starting to make my, my comp. It was called Against Police and Justice. And uh, I, early on, I had Dave Dichter involved. And uh, I started asking bands like Conflict and stuff about having songs for it. And they were all like, oh, no, not if Dave Dichter's involved. No way. I was like, oh, wait a second. Like, he's actually not involved at all. He just gave me a song and said I could use his name. I'm just doing it myself. And then they're like, okay, because of this comp. I think a lot of people, I don't know what happened, and I don't think the story will ever, perhaps might never get told fully, but I think it was supposed to be a benefit, or maybe the people don't know where the money went. That's really the end of the day, that's what happened with that comp. But it's still a great comp, and you know what? Fuck the money, it got people like me and a, lot of, a whole generation of people into political punk and good music. And uh, you know what? If you have to like bemoan like, losing a few thousand dollars, and then... Then you're not a political punk. You're just a capitalist. So fuck you. Okay. What about the FBI hacking into your webcam? Um, I just put a little. Uh, I have a little piece of tape over it. <laughs> so they don't see me masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <Ba -boom. laughs> <laughs> yeah, weren't they always able to do that? Yeah, who cares? I mean, they, they, you they know? put up all those images of us masturbating. Like, yeah. what, what, like, I prefer to masturbate in front of a, a large audience of people. <laughs> it's a, it's a fetish of some people, yeah. Since a leftover crack, what is crack like in Los Angeles? Um, when I was buying a lot of it, um, I, it was after I was living in Brad's garage. And... Uh, Depends on how much you had, but 30 bucks would buy you way too much crack to smoke in one evening, let me tell you. So it was app that we were recording our first leftover crack record. It was really good, you know, but, you know, taste change. I'm not, that, I'm not really into crack. I anyway. thought it was like fettuccine. Oh, right. Well, that's one. Well, I'm thinking about this other spot, but when I would go down to MacArthur Park and buy crack, um, yeah, they had it. They'd, like, spit it out of their mouths, and it would be these, like, they obviously made it, like cured it in little in a tray that was little skinny tubes of it. You ever have that? The fettuccine looking crack? Oh, I haven't had the fettuccine. It does, crack. yeah. But there's but I got a lot more crack when I went up like the hill by the the uh, highway in the bushes in the dark at night and I was like I gave them money and they just gave me this like handed me a bunch of like rocks. That wasn't actually the fettuccine crack, but there's it's all flavors of crack, I guess, you know? Leftover crack, where did you discover me? Um, I got a, a DVD at Alternative Tentacles. And then uh, as we just were watching it, Star Faking Hipsters was watching it on tour. Like when we'd be somewhere and be like, hey, they have a DVD player. It's, what do we got? We have, uh, let's see, we have Terminal City Ricochet in the garbage. <laughs> we have uh, the Pansy Division documentary. That's cool. I'll keep that. And then we had, uh, you know, I think we had No Effects Backstage Passport and we had... Nardwar, the human serviette, the best of. And so that was cool to watch. We, we enjoyed it. It's pretty cool. I feel like a lot of people that you interviewed have never seen you. <laughs> Thank you, Jello Biafra. Yeah, Jello Biafra spreading the word. Yeah. I honestly, watching those, the, your interviews, I was like, you know, and it's kind of sad. I was like, I'll, I'll never be able to get back in that country. And so I'll probably never meet Nardwar and get interviewed. But now it's all happening. Yeah. Our, our whole lives have changed. Yeah. And we can never, this is going to be one of those defining it's moments. Unfolding in it's front just of us like right in now. the last few years, yeah. you know, we have working How with, sad. <laughs> working with the crew, <laughs> Jesse Michaels, Nardwar, and what else yeah. is there? Where else is it to go from here? Ceiling. There's no, yeah. 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 The pinnacle. Well, thank you very much, Leftover Crack. Keep on rocking in the free world and do do loo do. Do do. Yeah.